Back in 2014, when I was a teenager, I was still living in my small hometown in Europe, in Bulgaria. Me and my childhood friends, two boys and one girl, were occasionally taking walks along the highway, which wasn't used that frequently. Most of the time, we would see a few trucks pass by, but it wasn't full of traffic, and it was very close to where we lived. So it was just a thing we often did. On the left side of it, there were houses, and on the right, there was a huge empty field with some hills there. But most of the land was empty, full of grass. On the right side where the field was, there was an old abandoned canal which wasn't used since the early 90s. It was full of trash, sticks, and it was also used to dispose bones of farm animals, such as goats and sheep. But there weren't so many. Creepy, yeah, but we knew they were from animals. We visited it before during daytime. Nothing impressive, really. Just an empty hole. One ordinary night, we decided to go on another walk along this highway, and we went to the end of it once and then came back. So we got bored since we're always doing the same thing. Someone gave the idea to go along the small dirt road, which was alongside the abandoned canal, and we didn't give it much thought. Now, keep in mind that on the highway, there are street lights, but on the small dirt road alongside the canal, there's no lights coming from anywhere. It was a full moon as far as I remember, since it wasn't pitch black night as we could see where we were going without using our phones for light. Anyways, we were walking, joking, laughing, and just having some good times really. One of the boys went ahead of us since he was walking faster. Me, the other boy, and the other girl were behind him, walking a bit slower. At the middle of the dirt road, the three of us decided to go back to the well-lit area of the highway and called the other guy to come back as well. A few minutes passed and the first boy who was ahead was almost at the end of the dirt road when he started running towards us screaming, guys, run. So instinctively, we all turned around to see what was happening and we just froze. We saw him running very fast towards us, but there was something behind him following him. Everyone managed to brush it off and run towards the highway, except me. I stood there for a few more seconds, trying to figure out what we were witnessing. It was very hard to describe. It was a figure that was somehow shining bright white light, and it was moving up and down, coming towards us. When I realized I couldn't figure out what I was seeing, I turned my back towards it and ran so fast that I even passed the others, even though they started running before me. We didn't stop until we reached the streetlights, and when we did, we turned around. There was nothing behind us anymore. We were terrified at first, but then we just dropped the subject and never spoke of it again. None of us shared this with anybody outside of our childhood group since we thought people would start rumors that we're taking drugs, etc., since it was a very small town. A couple of years went by, we grew up, and everyone started moving out to the bigger cities in the area. So at one point, I was the only person from our childhood group left in our hometown, since I was the youngest of us four. This happened in 2017. I was hanging outside in my hometown with some friends, a completely different group of people, who were never close with my childhood friends at any point. We started talking about random stuff. Then it got dark outside, and one of the guys suggested that we should share spooky stories. Then he started talking and shared how recently he and three other boys were hanging out during the night, alongside the dirt road next to the abandoned canal. At this point, I was all ears. He then proceeded to describe how exactly the same thing happened to them. How they were just hanging out there and then some weird shining figure, bright white, came towards them. They got scared, ran away, and then when they looked back, the figure had disappeared. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My jaw dropped to the ground. Then I shared that a couple of years back, me and three other people experienced the exact same thing in the very same place. 
and asked him if anybody of those people talked with him about this and if this is some kind of joke, but it wasn't. The story doesn't exactly end here. I went home that night, still stunned and I barely slept. I kept remembering what happened years ago and trying to figure things out, but thought of nothing that made sense. What we experienced was just unexplainable. So the next day, I decided to share everything with my parents, and I thought that they would just brush it off, say that we were just too scared and imagined something. But to my surprise, they were both just staring at me horrified. I asked them why they were not saying anything and just staring at me. Then they told me how back in the early 90s, when they were teenagers themselves, two kids went missing. A seven-year-old girl and a three-year-old boy. Before they went missing, these kids lived right next door to our apartment, in the house that was facing our balcony. Since it's a small town, everyone thought that the kids would be found soon. But five years passed by and there was no sign of them. Nobody had heard anything. There were no suspects in kidnapping or any leads to what happened to them. Then on the fifth year of their missing, the remains were found in the abandoned canal, and by the evidence found in there, it was concluded that they had been murdered. But the killer was never found. My parents said that this event shook the community back then, and a lot of people avoided going near that canal since it happened. But curious teens were occasionally visiting it and sharing stories of how they'd seen something unexplainable. However, nobody believed them. To this day, when I visit my hometown and pass by the canal, I feel so uneasy, and I just cannot even think going alongside the dirt road after knowing what really happened there. While I was camping at Indian Mound Reservation, I was subject to a ghost or ghosts. I woke in the middle of the night to the sound of someone walking around the tent. This was an old school A-frame canvas tent set up on a pallet-like platform. I also had the chills going from the bottom of my feet up my legs and into my spine. I was in shock because it was the feeling I've gotten before at my haunted house I grew up in. I called out quick, quietly to ask if someone was there and the walking and rustling sound paused momentarily. I then almost froze as the sound was now the sound of a slow walk into the tent, as if someone walked right in the front door. The moonlight through the crack of the tent didn't change its size, so I know it wasn't too dark to see someone walk in, because I would have seen much more lights come in. The ghost walked through the tent and out the other side. My chills were gone, but I was still uneasy because I knew I had just been visited. The name of the campsite is called IMR because it's native land in Wisconsin where burial grounds are visible as mounds. I had recently lost my mother when I was 12 years old. I took it about as well as you could expect a child could. I went through a lot of emotions and found it very hard to cope with the loss of her. One day, I was finally able to stand having friends over for the occasional sleepover. I had one of my best friends at the time stay the night with me. We were both in my room. I was in my bed and he was on the floor beside it. I always slept with the TV on and still do to this day. Now, the TV was on a stand on the foot of my bed. The power cord ran between the wall and my bed, so this cord was practically never touched. In the middle of a random conversation we were having before falling asleep, all of a sudden, the TV shut off. The room then went black, but not for long. To the left of my friend by the foot of his makeshift bed, an orb appeared. Not in an instant flash, but a warm illumination of bright green light. It stood in place and pulsed in brightness slowly. No noise emitted from the source. I was frozen in fear. 
I quietly asked my friend if he saw the light. He said in the most fearful tone, yes, I do, because I'm scared to move. I slowly reached for the remote to the TV that is located on my nightstand. I hit the power button to turn it back on and light up the room. The TV won't turn on and the pulsing light remains. I looked in between the bed and wall and the power cord is out of the socket, roughly a foot away from the outlet. I plug the TV back into the outlet as quick as I could. The TV turns on. As it lights up the room, I turn my attention back to the orb. It slowly dims into nothingness. It's as if it's slowly dissolved into a smaller and smaller source of light until nothing was there. Now keep in mind, I have no source of light in my room that was where the orb was located. The only light sources in my room were two lava lamps that were not plugged in and covered in dust for years of no use, the light bulb fixture by the door, and lastly, the TV. I let this story go for years without telling many people, but it remains in the back of my mind as something unexplainable. I would love to think it was my mom trying to maybe comfort me. Perhaps it was her way to say goodbye since I didn't get to at the hospital. My buddy still remembers the incident and assures me it is not a dream that I had. I'm not sure what it was or wasn't. I just know that it happened. I moved out of this house two years ago, but have experienced ghosts, UFO sightings and shadow people while living there. When I was eight years old, I moved into this two floor house in the city. As a kid, the first paranormal activity I witnessed was shadow people always running up and down the stairs. I used to be terrified of sleeping with my door closed because I always felt like it was going to be opened by a shadow. So I never closed my door. When I used to do homework on my computer, I would always see shadows running a flash up my stairs from the corner of my eyes. For some reason, my house always had a really eerie vibe to it when I was alone or when my parents were sleeping. And the worst part was my backyard. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night hungry. And when I would go to my kitchen and look outside, the kitchen window that was facing the backyard I would get very anxious and get these tension headaches where my eyes would get blurrier and blurrier. I felt like I shouldn't be staring outside, but I would force myself to because I didn't know why it made me feel that way. I would have friends sleep over or hang out with me and they would always tell me that my backyard really creeped them out. I used to be really scared of being in my room alone at night. So I used to watch television in the living room Every night, I would hear footsteps above my living room where my parents' room was. The footsteps sounded like boots walking back and forth. Even my dad acknowledged it, but he always brushed it off and said it was amusing. One night, my best friend had slept over. We wanted to hunt ghosts with my dad's old camera that had night vision. We caught what we thought were orbs. The camera would turn off when we would enter certain rooms. After this night, however, I stopped hearing paranormal activity or seeing any shadow people. As I got older, my fear started going away and I didn't care about my door being closed. The only thing I could never get over was the backyard. But since I stopped spending my days playing in my yard with my neighborhood friends, it stopped affecting me. I even went as far as playing the Ouija board in my room and other parts of my house, but it just never affected me. I used to suffer from terrible sleep paralysis before the Ouija board, but I learned how to control them, so it gave me more incentive to get rid of my fears completely. I found out from my neighbor who lived across the street for many years that my house used to be rented to an old couple who both had died there. That's all I know about its history. Oh yeah, and about the UFO sighting. I went to the movies with friends and had my parents pick me up after. 
When I got home, I stayed in the front yard staring up at the sky with my mom and something caught my attention. It was spinning lights that were swinging side to side. I thought it was satellites until the lights started moving the same way a hummingbird moves, jittery and quick. After that, it swooped to the right and disappeared in thin air. I tried thinking of many things it could have been, but no aircraft moves that quick. And it couldn't have been a drone because it literally disappeared. My mom would never admit what she saw, but I'm sure it was a UFO. I didn't sleep at all that night. I have absolutely no idea what is occurring in our apartment and if we should be concerned. My fiance, me and our roommates have been living in this apartment for a year now, but strange things keep happening. At first it used to just be weird sounds that we would brush off as the cats or the neighbors since that was the only explanation we had. When the sounds seemed as if they were coming from the adjacent room, we started getting concerned, especially if the cats were with us. We eventually started questioning it and then it quit happening. After it being quiet for about two months, it started again, but it became more than just noises. My fiance was in the kitchen and heard a very audible sigh that sounded like it came from the dining area. In our apartment, the kitchen, dining area and living room are one big room with a counter separating the kitchen and living room. When he turned around, there was no one there, no cat, no one on the balcony and no one outside after looking through the window. That same week, we were in our bedroom when the faucet in the bathroom turned on by itself. We were very concerned, especially when later that night my phone flew off the bed. My phone was on the bed and it flew off and landed about two feet away from the bed. It wasn't on the edge of the bed and it moved way too forcefully for it to have been gravity. After that night, I talked to my sister, friends and mom about the things going on, but then it stopped again. It recently started back again though. It's been quiet for about three months this time. We're hearing weird noises again, but the event that makes me scared is what happened the other day. My fiance got a new bike and he was at the bottom of the stairs outside, messing with the seat. I was standing at the top of the stairs talking to him and also talking to the cats in the living room window. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move in our bedroom window, so I immediately looked that way. The blinds were down and completely closed in both bedroom windows. They're side by side, except for one spot where it looked like it was being pulled open. Like when you're peeking out to see who's there. Well, after looking for like two seconds, it snapped shut and I looked back over to the living room window to still see both cats. When I went inside, our roommate was sound asleep in his room. So I have absolutely no explanation. I also watch Bob's Burgers on repeat for comfort. And for some reason, 95% of the time when I put it on, it will randomly turn off. We haven't spoken to our roommate about the matter, so I don't know if he has experienced anything. But should we be worried? My fiance and I bought a house in July and have been settling in. It's an oldish house built in the 60s across from a church. The church used to own it at one point, but they were not the last owners. Anyway, my paranormal senses have always been auditory. I have tons of personal paranormal experiences that involve hearing rather than sensing or seeing. And after a few of my scarier encounters, I've kind of learned how to turn it on and off. And I definitely prefer to keep it off. I've been with my fiance for four years and I'm the spooky loving one. He is largely more logical. This matters because I'm about to recount to you his experience and I want to make it known that I've never heard him say anything like this in our four years together. 
Nothing too weird has happened in the house so far, except the fire alarms keep going off. There are two of them, one in the hallway and one in a back room that's my office, and both of them keep randomly going off. We've replaced the battery, and they're not hooked to the electric in any sort of way, and one still went off the other night, right as we started some intimate acts. Another slightly weird thing, my dog won't go outside. My dog used to living on a mountain. He was raised being held side on his own a good amount of time, and he loves the outdoors. Now, it's sincerely a struggle to get him to go outside to the yard every single day. Sometimes I have to physically push him to the door and out the door. Once he's out there, he stares back inside at me, and it takes me ignoring him and leaving the kitchen for him to finally go out into the yard. So two nights ago, my fiance is having indigestion and wakes up in the middle of the night. He really has to use the bathroom, so he gets up and starts heading through the kitchen towards the hallway. He suddenly stops and gets an overwhelming feeling of don't go down there. And he says it felt like a huge warning and weight on his chest. He said he felt watched as he turned around. He comes back to bed and lays down. Our room is a bonus room the previous owners made out of the garage. He lays awake for hours staring at the ajar door of our room, still feeling like he's being watched with the heavy weight on his chest. He says that at some point, the feeling went away like a sudden whoosh. It just happened, and he felt immediately lighter and was able to fall back asleep. The next morning, I go let the dogs out. They sleep in our spare bedroom halfway down the hall. Our young and dumb dog comes out right away, as she always does. But my dog is laying on the bed, trembling all over. I've only ever seen him like that when there's thunder. He does get up after some coaxing, and does his usual resistance to going out, and he's still trembling all over. I checked the weather, and we had no storms. It was dry outside. Last night, as we go to lay down, my fiancé says he feels that heavy, I'm being watched feeling again. I don't feel it at all. Any ideas what this could be? I'm a mental health therapist and will keep an eye out on my partner, but there's nothing currently to suggest this is a mental health thing for him. He's also not the type to make things up. I certainly believe his experiences. Over the course of the past few years, I've had a few encounters with the paranormal. I hope it's not, but no other explanation is left for me. In 2009, I was in my bed, sleeping, and my parents were also asleep. Sometime in the night, I hear my dad wake up and go to the bathroom, which is right across my bedroom in the hallway. I hear him flush the toilet, and as he was about to leave and go back to sleep, I feel like I'm drowning and can't open my eyes. It was all dark, just like you close your eyes normally. So I yell out, Dad, help. He walks in and shakes me violently to wake up. Once I've opened my eyes, I could see a look of terror on his eyes and my mom behind him, shaking in fear. My entire room was dripping from water. The ceiling, the furniture, the walls, everything was just wet and water was dripping everywhere. Still, no logical explanation to this day. In that same bedroom, sometime after the first incident, my balcony doors would randomly explode every other few nights after midnight, when I would be in deep sleep. I tried staying awake a few times to see if it's my sleeping brain playing tricks on me, and sure enough, I would get startled by the explosion every time no matter if asleep or awake. Exactly after midnight and holy water, my parents are Catholic, would only postpone the explosions for a week or two, then they would come back again. After I moved out to Germany, I would always have nightmares when going to sleep. One night, I stayed out until like 3 a.m. partying and whatnot. I didn't take any alcohol or substances, as I was a designated driver. And when I came back to my room, I closed the doors, rolled the blinds, and went to sleep. Sure enough, not even 10 minutes later, I hear footsteps 
heavily draggling themselves around my room. All of a sudden, I hear something playing with the window blinds. They were on the inside of the window, like a cat running its paws across them. After it got bored, the footsteps continued towards my bed and I could feel a slight pull on my blanket. I was covering myself with it from feet to head at this point. And then I could feel something like a weight of a pit bull lay next to me. Around 5 a.m. at sunrise, the weight had disappeared and the footsteps stopped. Everything went back to normal and I could barely sleep after such an event. After that, I couldn't sleep in that room without lights. In my current place, I had fallen asleep on my couch after a long day and just covered myself with only a blanket over me. Around 2 or 3 a.m., I woke up to the sound of my doorbell going crazy, but I couldn't move. I closed my eyes and opened them again, and what do I see? A girl, literally like the one from The Ring, standing next to my feet and staring at me. In all that panic and adrenaline, I tried to kick her a few times, but my body wasn't responding to my commands. Later, I'd figured it out that I've literally had my first sleep paralysis in my life. But I think it might be related to my previous experiences. Back in 2012, my family moved to this fairly isolated house in the mountains of Colorado. The house was big, pretty ugly on the outside, and just kind of creepy in general. The first day we moved in, I saw this miniature door that led to the attic. Twelve or so year old me was curious and went up there to explore. But all I found was a tiny piece of paper with a Bible verse on it. Unfortunately, I've completely forgotten which verse it was, but it did creep me out a tiny bit. Anyways, after that, I never personally saw anything weird for at least a year or two. However, my older sister claimed to have had these paranormal experiences fairly often. One time, she said she was laying on her bed, and suddenly this large candle she had on her desk just launched itself across the room, hitting the wall. The glass case shattering everywhere. I personally didn't know what to make of her story, as I never saw it, and I've always been skeptical about any paranormal experiences. Not long after that, she claimed there was a bird right outside her window staring at her. I forget if it was a bat or an owl, but I want to say it was an owl. She acted like it stared at her forever, but once again, I didn't know what to think of it. She isn't one to lie about stuff like that, and she's claimed to have had many other similar experiences in past houses. So either she's just crazy, or for some reason spirits or something like to mess with her. One night, I was trying to sleep when I noticed something move in front of my closet. When I looked, I saw this young girl kind of just float towards me. She didn't seem to move any muscle at all. She was just standing straight up, no facial expressions. At first, she moved very slowly towards me, but her speed got exponentially faster. By the time she reached the end of my bed, she was moving faster than I could run. For some reason, her speed always bothered me but I feel like I can't understate how fast she was going at the end. I jumped out of my bed in pure panic, and then she was gone. I was living in an apartment building in Brooklyn at the time and had been there for about five years when this incident occurred. The building was about a century old and had three floors. There were no apartments on the ground floor, and the second and third floors each had two one-bedrooms. My apartment was on the third floor, and a couple lived in the one next door, the layout of which was identical to mine, just on the other side of the wall. In all, there were six people in the building, including myself, and for a week or so around the holidays this one year, I had the entire building to myself. Everyone else was traveling to visit family. My family lives in New York, so I usually stay put. My next door neighbors asked me to care for their cats while they were gone, 
which I agreed to do. They often did the same for me, and I'd done it for them several times before, so I knew the carts well enough. Beginning the first night that I was alone in the first building, I started hearing voices from the apartment next door. Apart from the fact that no one was supposed to be there, what most unnerved me about it was the voices were whispering and yet sounded nearer than they ought to have. Although the building was old, the walls were pretty substantial and I rarely heard the neighbors when they were home. If we happened to be right across the wall from each other at the same time, I might hear the undertone of a conversation spoken at normal volume, but never distinctly enough to make out words. Using that as a point of comparison, it seemed strange that whispers would carry at this volume, though I still couldn't make out individual words. I was a bit frightened, since I knew no one was staying next door. However, I had expected that it might be a bit creepy to be in the building alone, so perhaps I primed my imagination to play tricks on me. I began coming up with, and refuting, a series of rationalizations. Voices sometimes carried up from the street in strange ways, and I might be hearing people talking on the sidewalk. Unlikely, since it's winter, there doesn't appear to be anyone outside and all the windows are shut. Maybe the neighbors gave another set of keys to some friends and told them they could hang out there when they wanted to. They'd have mentioned this, and they would have heard people coming up the stairs and opening the door. There could be something wrong with the heat that's causing the pipes to make strange noises. Then why are these sounds only heard at night and regardless of whether the heat is on or off? And so on. I was only able to hear the whispering from a certain spot in the living room, since the bedroom was silent. I was able to put it out of my mind and eventually get to sleep. I woke up repeatedly that night from terrible nightmares, though I didn't feel I had much choice but to stay in bed as the thought of getting up and going into, or even passing through the living room, filled me with an abnormal dread. That had never happened before, and the nightmares were unusual for me. Since I rarely remember my dreams, maybe once every two weeks or so ordinarily, but these were intense and vividly recalled, and they persisted throughout the entire week. The next morning, I went next door to feed the neighbor's cat, Nothing looked out of place, but the cat was behaving strangely. Ordinarily, he was friendly and would run to the door when he heard me coming in before parking himself next to his food bowl. This time, he sat in a corner of the living room, facing the wall, and staring up towards the ceiling. Even after I filled his bowl, he didn't budge, though he would usually bury his face in his food and inhale it. I went over and stroked the back of his neck. He hissed, never looking away from the ceiling. This added to my unease, and for the remaining days, I would only go next door to feed him in the early morning and late afternoon, while it was still light out. The next few days were the same, the cat behaving strangely during the day, though he would eat most of his food between my visits. The whispering sounds from the wall in the evening, and the nightmares at night. The only other strange thing that happened during the daytime was a sudden invasion of cockroaches. During that week, I encountered as many as four or five a day, as many as I would usually see in a year. They're inevitable in New York, and you have to resign yourself to the knowledge that they're tucked away in the walls of old buildings, but it was as if they were being driven from their usual hiding spots and into my apartment. Finally, the neighbors came back though I didn't see them for several days after they returned, and the sound stopped, along with the roaches, thankfully. One night later that week, there was a knock at my door. It was the woman who lived next door, and she was panicked. She said that someone was in her apartment, and she'd called the police. I told her to come in to wait for the cops, locked the door, and asked what happened. She said she had looked out the back window and seen two figures standing on the rooftop of the building below ours, standing perfectly still and staring straight up into her window. She was freaked out and went to the kitchen to call her husband, shutting all the doors behind her. Then she heard whispers from the living room and called the cops, thinking that whomever she'd seen outside had gotten up the fire escape and in through the window. 
The cops came and told us to wait while they checked the apartment. We were peering out into the hall from my apartment. One cop gestured to his ear and mouthed the word voices to the other. They flung open the door, went in with guns drawn and moved from room to room. They said afterward they thought they'd heard someone when they were outside the door, but the apartment was empty with no sign of a forced entry or exit and there was no one on the roof below. The neighbor was so shaken that I didn't think it was the right time to tell her that I'd been hearing strange sounds from her apartment while they were all away, though everything seemed to go back to normal after that. I moved out a couple of months later, but not because of those incidents. A friend who lived nearby had to move and offered to transfer his lease to me. It was a larger and newly refurbished apartment, so I went for it. Since the new place was only a few blocks away, I decided to move the cats last, after the movers had finished. I went back to the empty apartment early that afternoon for the cat and found him sitting in the kitchen, hissing towards the living room. I'd only ever heard him hiss once or twice before, when I've accidentally come close to his stepping on his tail. I was standing in the kitchen behind him, with my back to the window that overlooked the roof where the neighbour said she'd seen a pair of figures a few months earlier. Without warning, the window shattered. I wheeled around, thinking someone must have thrown something at it, and expecting to see a rock or a baseball on the floor. But there was nothing there. It was broad daylight, and there was no one outside. What's more, I'd noticed that the glass didn't fall onto the floor inside the kitchen, but had exploded outward onto the fire escape, as if it had been broken from the inside. As I said, I moved because I'd found a better apartment, but I was not sorry to be out of there after all that, and I hustled the cat into the carrier and out the door as quickly as I could. I had to go back for smaller items a few times over the next week, but only during the daylight hours, and I felt a serious unease each time I walked through the door, and I hadn't really experienced while I was living there, with the ex exception of that one week. That's the closest thing to a paranormal experience I've ever had, so I thought I'd share it, though I don't draw any conclusions. As mentioned, I'd been living in that building for about five years before having that experience, and thought it was especially strange that something weird would start so suddenly. I'd be especially interested to hear if anyone has any similar experiences or thoughts on that in particular.